Hey guys, Sentinel H here bringing you my second Feed the Beast tutorial. This time we're taking a look at a simple frame elevator and specifically the circuit that I've used in my geothermal plant video and in my nuclear plant video to automate the frame doors and the frame elevator. So guys, this is just a simple elevator. It has a couple of floors and it goes up and down each floor. So if I press this button, the elevator will go up. It's kind of bumpy because frames and it'll stop at the next floor, press this button, goes down. The down, the trip down is a lot smoother than the trip up. That's just because of the way the frames are interacting with your character, kind of makes you bump a little bit. But anyway, we'll take a look at the circuit. So the way this circuit works is that we start with a toggle latch, and the toggle latch outputs a signal constantly on one of two sides until it receives a redstone signal. When it gets a pulse, it switches that side, and that's how it works. And then it'll switch back, so it, it you know it remembers it. Let's say it's in. Next piece we have is a not gate. A not gate will output a redstone signal on three sides, as long as it, until it receives a redstone signal. So when this switches and outputs on this side, I didn't mean to do that, but you see how that how that worked. It started to output, and the circuit went. And that doesn't mess the elevator up. So then the NOT gate goes into the timer, and the timers don't run while they're receiving a signal. This timer is set to 0.85 seconds, which I have found to be the fastest time that you can pulse a frame motor without any issues. So at 0.85 seconds, there will never be any skipped ticks, there won't be any glitches where it fires a tick too quickly, uh, it works quite well, and you saw how smooth the down ride was, uh, and that that's how smooth it'll be for doors and it looks great um, doors look really nice and smooth especially if there's blocks on both sides of them so this is how we pulse the engines to make it move the next part is what causes it to move the number of blocks that we want and that's the counter so the way the counter works is that you go in here and you set maximum count increment and decrement and what happens is that when it receives a signal from the plus side it, it increments its counter, its count, by the number you set on the increment. And when it gets a signal from the minus side, it decrements the count by the number set as decrement. And when it reaches its maximum count, it outputs a redstone signal. From this side here. Maybe from the, I don't know how. But it outputs a redstone signal. And that's what controls the circuit. So I will run it again. We'll run it on the other side. It's, it's identical. And you can see how it works. One, two, three, four, five. The counter fires, switches the toggle latch back to turn off the timer, and resets itself by activating its decrement side. So you can make this as long as you want. You can have this counter, you can have this run to move the frames as much as you want. In this example, the levels were each five blocks. But you can make it move 10 blocks, 20 blocks, 100 blocks, doesn't matter guys, as long as you want. The important part about this is that the decrement is set to the same value as the maximum count. That's, that's what really matters here. And the connection points for this. This is not as small as you can make this. Uh, if you move this right against the timer and you run the wire straight up here, you just have to make sure you have a, 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 a cover strip here to stop it from connecting. But otherwise, that's it, guys. That's how the that's how the uh, circuit works. I'm sure you could do this s with computers, but I don't know how to program the computers, so we do it analog. We do it old school. To briefly mention this elevator, in case you're w wondering how interested in it, um, it uses a block breaker and a deployer. There's the deployer to add and remove bl uh, frames from the stack as needed. So whenever you trigger the up, it moves up, and the deployer puts another block in place. Oh, I didn't reach. The deployer places another block, and when you go down, the block breaker breaks the blocks that, that get to it. And it feeds it through the pipe back into the deployer. The important part about this is just that the block breaker and the deployer are underneath the frame motors. 
You could, you could, and you don't have to put it like this. You could put the these however you want. This worked out pretty well though because I could wire it up like that in the corners, um, and then the colored wire is just for show, so that you can, you know, there's no mistaking which side was which. But that's it, guys. I've been Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.